Hello everyone, this is Dr. Teal. Welcome back to my channel. Today I want to give you a brief introduction into medical coding. So what is medical coding? Basically, the job of a medical coder is to take what they are reading in the health record and they will do some abstracting to be able to parse out critical pieces of information to assign codes. And the codes are alphanumeric codes. These codes are attached to the diagnoses, procedures, services, and supplies that are rendered during a patient encounter. That patient encounter might be an inpatient encounter, it might be an outpatient encounter, it might be a freestanding laboratory or a radiology facility, imaging center. It could be in the hospital setting as an inpatient or as an outpatient. So again, the medical coders read through the clinical do documentation, they abstract out relevant information and they translate that into coded data. So that translate is kind of a key piece of information there. You're taking what you're reading in the chart and you're turning that into codes based on the official guidelines for a particular code set. The providers don't always speak in coding terms, they speak in clinical terms. And your job as a coder is to take that clinical terminology and turn it into coded data. In order to do that, you must absolutely be proficient in medical terminology, anatomy and physiology, pharmacology, and the format and structure of health records. So if any of those areas are areas that you struggle with, it would be important for you to take some time to brush up your skills in those areas before you pursue medical coding. There are four different code sets that I want to highlight today. There are more code sets than what is shown on this slide here, but when we're talking about medical coding for reimbursement purposes, these are the ones that are utilized. So first off, we have ICD-10-CM. That stands for the International Classification of Disease 10th Revision Clinical Modification. Then you have icd 10 PCS. That stands for International Classification of Disease, 10th Revision, Procedural Coding System. Up next, we have CPT, which is the current procedural terminology. And lastly, we have HCPCS. So that H-C-P-C-S is actually pronounced as an acronym HCPCS. And that stands for the Healthcare Common Procedure Coding System. So how do these codes work? Now, as I mentioned, there are many others. There are dental codes, there are LOINC codes, there are SNOMED codes, but from a coding perspective, when we're talking about third-party reimbursement, when a patient presents for healthcare services, these are the ones that are most widely used in the healthcare setting. So let's talk a little bit about how they work together. If you're coding hospital inpatient services, the billing for the hospital is what we refer to as a facility fee. What you're gonna use in that setting are the ICD-10-CM and the ICD-10-PCS code sets. And the billing for these services will occur on a UB04 claims form or its electronic equivalent. So the ICD-10-CM codes tell the diagnosis. That's the translation of the what's wrong with the patient into the diagnostic codes. And then the ICD-10 PCS is strictly used for inpatient procedures. So procedures that are performed in the inpatient setting. You will not use ICD-10 PCS in the outpatient setting at all. So this is for the hospital's bill. So if you have professional services, which I'm going to get to in a moment, even if the patient's an inpatient, all of the professional services are billed a little bit differently. So I'm strictly referring to that hospital bill. If any of you have ever been in the hospital, you've probably recognized 
that you receive a multitude of bills. You might get a separate bill for the facility itself, so that's the hospital bill, and the combination of these ICD-10 CM codes and ICD-10 PCS codes, a combination of them um, creates what we call an MSDRG, a Medicare Severity Diagnosis Related Grouping and the reimbursement is attached to that MSDRG. And that's how the hospital gets paid. But you also get in the mail several other bills. You might get a separate bill from the lab, a separate bill from the providers that saw you. If you had surgery and they sent off things for pathology, you're gonna have a bill from the surgeon, from the pathologist, and from the anesthesiologist. All of that happens separately. So it's important to understand which code sets are used in each of those circumstances. So again, for that hospital inpatient bill, you're going to use a combination of ICD-10 CM codes and ICD-10 PCS codes. Now, when we talk about the outpatient setting or professional services, that's the billing for the physician we're gonna use a combination of ICD-10 CM codes, CPT codes, and HCPCS codes. And the billing for these services occur on the CMS 1500 claim form. Now you may have noticed that ICD-10 CM is used in both the inpatient and outpatient setting, whether you're billing for the hospital or for the professional services, you still use those ICD-10 CM codes. And that's the diagnosis side of things. So we always need a diagnosis, whether it's an inpatient or an outpatient, we still need to know the diagnosis. So that's why that code set is used regardless of the setting. And where the difference lies is with the procedure coding. We use ICD-10 PCS on the inpatients, as I mentioned a moment ago, and we use CPT or HCPCS codes if we're billing for the doctor on the inpatient services or if we're billing for outpatient services. So the medical coding actually tells the story of the patient. It's like the coder is putting together a puzzle or painting a picture. First of all, you have to figure out what happened with that patient and then why did that happen? So the what happened piece, that's the procedure or services that were rendered. And the why is why did they need that procedure or why did they require those services? So that's your diagnosis or your reason for the visit. Coders will read through the medical record or the chart, and then they quote abstract. So we, we call it abstracting. That's where they parse out bits and pieces of information and all the details necessary in that medical record to find all the pieces of information that they need to put the puzzle together. So the combination of codes is what tells the patient's story. Now, if you are interested in medical coding as a career, I would highly encourage you to become certified. There are two main national organizations that offer certification for coders. The first one is AHIMA, or the American Health Information Management Association, and the second one is AAPC. And they used to be called the American Academy of Professional Coders, but I believe nowadays they simply go by the acronym AAPC. What I have here on this slide is a few of the credentials that are offered by these two national certifying bodies, but this is not all inclusive. Both of them have other specialty type credentials in addition to what I'm showing here. What I'm highlighting are those that are specific to medical coding. Both of them offer what we call an apprentice or associate level coding certification, which is your entry level, a non-experienced coder that's trying to get their foot in the door. So with AHIMA, that's what's called the CCA, the Certified Coding Associate. And with AAPC, it's called the CPCA, and that's Certified Professional Coder Apprentice. And those are your starting entry level credentials, as I mentioned. And then both offer mastery level credentials. 
So with AHEMA, that's your CCS or your CCSP, excuse the typo on the slide there, that last one under AHEMA should be CCSP, okay? So CCS is Certified Coding Specialist, and that's more of your inpatient based, and the CCS hyphen P would be the Certified Coding Specialist physician based. So that would be more of your uh, professional fee, your physician based coding. And then for American Academy of Professional Coders, they have their certified professional coder. And then they also break it down to the certified outpatient coder, COC, and the certified inpatient coder, CIC. So again, um, if you are interested in coding as a career, it is highly suggested that you seek out certification. If you take some time to explore some job uh, board postings, some career websites, whether it be through one of these professional organizations because they have job boards, AHEMA, for example, has their career assist area. You have places like Glassdoor or Indeed or even LinkedIn where you can do some job searches. I would encourage you to investigate these positions to see what the qualifications are that the individual employer is looking for. Some of them might advertise that they're looking for a specific type of coding certification, while others might list all of these and say, if you have any one of these, then it is acceptable. So just do your homework, figure out where you want to go with your coding career, and what does that require for you to get there? which one of these certifications are needed. So again, in summary, that was just a brief high level overview of what medical coding is all about. In case you missed it, ICD-10 CM, that's the clinical modification, that is for the diagnosis coding. And then your procedure codes are going to be either ICD-10 PCS if you're on the inpatient hospital side, or it's going to be a combination of CPT and HCPCS codes for the professional fees or the outpatient side. So learn your code sets, um, figure out do you want to be an inpatient coder, do you want to be an outpatient coder, do you want to know it all? That will help drive you into which ones of the certifications you might want to pursue and which one of the code sets to study up on. So thank you for spending a few moments with me. I hope you enjoyed this brief overview of what medical coding is all about. I would appreciate it if you like, share, subscribe to my channel. And with that, Dr. Teal out.